Okay, so what is an asteroid? Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, they're rocky bodies that orbit between Mars and Jupiter. So in general, these are stony or sometimes metallic objects. Um, and there are asteroids mainly in the asteroid belt, but there are also several collections of asteroids that are not within the belt. And these are in two positions around Jupiter called its Lagrange points. Those are essentially places where there's a uh, gravitational stability and material can collect. Uh, the details on Lagrange points are rather complicated, so I won't get into it, except to say there's kind of a swarm uh, following Jupiter. Uh, one of the swarms is called the Trojans. The others is called the Greeks after the Trojan Wars. Uh, but in general, we call these types of asteroids Trojans, no matter where uh, they're, like no matter what body they're orbiting with. So Jupiter has these huge swarms of Trojans, but Mars also has a couple of small swarms of Trojans and even Earth does. So these are um, thought to now be, you know, widespread features that the asteroids that cross the orbit of a planet sometimes do get captured into its Lagrange points. All right, but the vast majority of asteroids are within the asteroid belt. And even though this image makes it look really crowded, uh, this is just an artifact of how big of a pixel size we can achieve, or I guess rather how small of a pixel size we can achieve. And in all actuality, asteroids are really widely spaced. So your book mentions that um, if asteroids are about one kilometer across, that's a rather small asteroid, but a one kilometer asteroid would be about one to 10 million kilometers away from the next asteroid. So this is good news uh, because it does mean that we can send space probes to the outer planets without you know, running into things. Um, right now, there's about a million known asteroids, but there's probably way more than that that we haven't discovered yet. New asteroids are getting discovered all the time, even by um, amateurs, and uh, you get to name it if you find it. So there's some interesting names. Some, there's an asteroid named after a pet cat. There's another one named after a dog. So, you know, people, people find their asteroids and then they get to name them. Uh, some of the important asteroids eventually become classified into the official naming system, then those provisional names go away. Um, but some of the official ones are named after scientists, including the authors of your textbook. All right, so how did these asteroids form? Um, there's a couple different scenarios here. Um, some asteroids are thought to be original planetesimals that formed at the same time that the solar system did. So they formed right along with the rest of the planets in the sun. And they did not coalesce into a single planet in that location because um, of probably the gravitational interaction with Jupiter. So Jupiter's um, repeated gravitational tugs uh, on orbits that are in resonances with Jupiter's orbital period um, would have created sort of, you know, gaps in the asteroid belt in the same way that the moons of Saturn create gaps in Saturn's rings. And so then there, the, you know, that constant disturbance makes it hard for the planetesimals to have coalesced into a whole planet. So that's the, um, you know, the hypothesis that I've seen laid out as to why the asteroids were unable to become a planet. So that explains some of our larger asteroids, uh, but these are not unchanged for the most part since the beginning of the solar system. Some of these have collided with each other and what we see now are collision products either bits and pieces that have broken off of larger bodies after they've collided, or um, rubble piles, just kind of tenuous collections of material that may have um, gathered, but they, that may be in the process of falling apart. Um, so it's, it's possible for asteroids to get heated by the sun in um, kind of, you know, they, they have weird shapes. So if one side gets heated and the other side doesn't, then it starts to spin from an effect we call radiation pressure. So you can think of it as the warm side is radiating away. And so it gets pushed opposite in the direction that it radiates. And eventually this can cause asteroids to spin so fast that they uh, start to fall apart. And also collisions can pulverize asteroids. So it's possible that a collision uh, basically causes a shock wave to ripple through the entire asteroid and, and make it um, more of a rubble pile than a solid object. Okay, so asteroids, what I'm trying to say, can have a really complicated history, uh, but in general, they're some of the oldest material 
uh, in the solar system.